Greetings fellow explorers, this is Tony with Fount Systems Network and we're here in pursuit of low carbon innovations for cottage scale industrial wastewater treatment. What happened to seawater desalination? Well, it sounds like you may have missed our prior episode. I'll post a link to it right here and you can see the reason for the pivot. Today we're going to start looking at wastewater from leather tanneries and this will be the first of a few episodes focusing on this. If you're like me, then you've never considered what goes into making leather before. And having started looking into this, I found first of all that leather tanning is huge. It's a global industry that's been around literally for centuries, and it employs surely millions of people in thousands of factories around the world. I can't even find any specific data right now on how many there are, but this Pulitzer Center report suggests that there are over 2,000 leather tanneries in India alone. We're looking at leather tanneries because it's a very intensive process and because the industry exists in various stages of development and maturity, ranging from cottage scale operations working largely by hand, like this one in India, to well-regulated individual factories like this one in the United States, to very large factories located in le dedicated leather tanning districts like this one in Northern Italy. I'll add here, and this is central to our pursuit, leather tanning generates manageable amounts of very polluted wastewater. This wastewater is very complex, carrying the numerous chemicals contained in the tanning process as well as copious amounts of biological matter. And in many parts of the world, this wastewater is a contributor to environmental degradation, as shown in this homemade footage from India. Stay here and we'll take a closer look at the leather tanning process, some of the chemicals involved, and the wastewater created by it. So first, let's take a quick look at the leather manufacturing process. I'm only going to present a very condensed version of a generic tanning process here, and we're just going to zoom right through it. Receiving the salted hides, liming, fleshing, trimming, tanning, samying, inspecting, splitting, shaving, dyeing, samming again, drying, staking, buffing, embossing, finishing, Final milling, ironing, and there we have the finished leather. Wow, pretty involved, isn't it? Now, I'm sure some of you are wanting to take a closer look at what I just showed you. I need to move on here, but if you're wanting to slow down and learn more about the process, here's a link to the best produced documentary I've found on leather tanning. It's very nicely produced. It's like a 25 minute documentary showing one factory's entire process from start to finish. So now let's look at some key steps in the process that produce some of that wastewater and some of the contaminants in them. Wastewater from the liming process. We have organic matter, liming agents, sulfides, and biocides. Wastewater from the tanning process. We have organic matter, acids, chromium sulfite tanning agents. And finally, wastewater from the dyeing process, organic matter, dyes, chromium sulfate tanning agents. But what does all that wastewater look like when it comes out of the tanning factory? So at this point, I hope I've convinced you that tannery sludge can be a dramatic problem. So what do tanneries do with all that wastewater? The short answer is that it's a mixed bag. Here, for example, in northern Italy, the tanneries are all clustered together and have a dedicated industrial wastewater treatment facility just for the tanneries. Here's another example of a dedicated wastewater treatment facility to serve a single tannery in the Netherlands. And here's what a clustered tannery wastewater treatment facility looks like in India. And here, finally, is a tannery that dumps its wastewater into a small stream. So at this point, I can conclude that given that there are many thousands of tanneries around the world, and putting aside these tanneries that have dedicated wastewater treatment facilities, I suspect that many are either dumping their effluent into natural water bodies, or they're just adding it to their city's sewer systems. And for those tanneries that are treating it themselves on site, 
they must have ongoing maintenance expenses and headaches that come along with it. I can say all of this with some confidence because there's already a dedicated UN committee that's promoting better practices. It's the United Nations Industrial Development Organization's Leather Panel, and it's trying to get the leather industry to clean up its act. So not only do we have an uneven situation around the world when it comes to how this industrial wastewater gets handled, but now looking back at our pursuit, even in situations where there are modern engineered treatment facilities, we still have our carbon dioxide emissions coming from these, these facilities that needs to be addressed. Do you think there might be opportunities for low carbon innovations in this space? Tune in next time and we're going to look more closely at the energy intensity, carbon dioxide emissions, and financial cost of wastewater treatment for leather tanneries. So that wraps up this episode on leather tannery wastewater. We got a nice introduction there, both to the leather tanning process, but also the wastewater generated by it. I hope you found it educational and informative and that you continue to tune in. If you like what you see here on the Fount Systems Network, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And we also have a Twitter feed where you can see more day-to-day -day stuff that we're looking at. That's it, everyone. Thanks for watching. Keep exploring. Keep growing. I'll see you next time.